There is a long tunnel at the north end of the room that you follow. I am making you follow it because if I say, do you want to go up the tunnel? You're going to be like, well, I guess we could go up the tunnel. Maybe. And you go, go up the tunnel. And, uh, jump down the mountain, actually. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, you could do that. Um, Don't tell him that. He will do it. <laughs> He's done it before. And you eventually come out to a large, big area uh, out at the top of the mountain. Seems to be the uh, just about the highest peak of the mountain. Um, lots of snow, a little bit icy, and there's a big cavern at the north part of it that you proceed through. And you come through another tunnel and find yourself on the other side of the tunnel out at the other end of the mountain, where you have finally arrived after whoa, several... Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, we go through all this crap to get up through this mountain. We're at the freaking top of the mountain, near the top of the mountain, maybe. Then we go through a tunnel, and wham, we're on the other side of the mountain. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> it, it's a bizarre geography. I actually look back at the, the, the game maps, and the height of Mount Saber on the one side of it is about twice as tall as the height of it on the other side of the mountain. <laughs> Uh-huh. So I'm assuming there's there's some sort of weird magical geography that's uh, throwing everything off. So it, and it and it's a long twisty tunnel maybe, uh, but <laughs> you uh, you come out on the side and when you emerge from the tunnels onto a small patch of grass struggling for its survival, you are greeted by a gorgeous view from atop one of Mount Saber's higher peaks. Below you, enclosed by Mount Saber and a few smaller mountains, is a verdant valley covered in a carpet of greenery with patches of fluffy trees here and there. You occasionally spy movement amongst the plants, a fleeting glimpse of something in flight, rounding the mountain, or a group of tall shapes lumbering into the trees. You hear the sound of a waterfall in the distance, and a gently flowing river cuts through the center of the valley. There is one obvious path into the valley, down the icy slope before you, which has melted somewhat into slippery slush. Back to you. Uh, do we see a town somewhere? Uh, it looks like you're, you've got a little bit too much mountain blocking you off, but it's very possible that there's a town down below. But, but you said there's an amazing view. <laughs> it's an amazing view, but you can't see a town from this amazing view, and there are parts of the mountain that are sticking out around you just a little bit too far to see everything. But we're... Weren't we at the top? You're at one of the high... The top no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you were at close to the top. You went through one of the tunnels and came out... I fly another... up to the top. Uh, almost at the top. <laughs> and I fly up to the top. <laughs> you can't. You don't have the MP <laughs> for that. And you're, you're out at a point where there are some slightly higher peaks and ridges and bumps that are sticking out around your view. If you really want to try and fly to the top of the mountain, I will let you blow all of your magic points. <laughs> Can I instead, like, cut, put together Crystallis and, like, cut down the peak or something that's blocked my view? <laughs> We're going to take the top off the mountain. And uh, I'll you... and create, you know, Kensu strip, uh, you know, mountaintop removal mining. Uh, that's up to your teammates to relinquish their swords to you. Uh... <laughs> guys, you guys, do your swords. I'm going to cut the mountain in that. I'm kind of fond of my wind sword, thank you. Ah, uh, fine. <laughs> I can use a geography check to see if there's a town nearby. Go ahead. Okay. I got a 24. 24. Uh, you are pretty sure that the fabled port town of Portoa that you've been told about is probably just around the corner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Portoa is a port town. <laughs> yeah. They were really clever on that one. I like it. My God. Okay, so by around the corner, do you mean through two more boss fights, or...? <laughs> <laughs> by around the corner, I mean if you peek around the corner of these rocks that are blocking your view, you could probably see it down there. What? That never occurred to us with this amazing view. It's like, here, I'm going to move a step to the right. Oh, there's a town. Well, you have an amazing view out in front of you, but there's a little outcropping to your right that's probably blocking the view of this town. A little loud cry. Like, if, is it like if I were to hold up my thumb, like it would block it? It's a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> like your hand. Or your ego. I'm pretty, pretty sure my ego could block out the sun if yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> so are we going someplace, guys? Let's go to Portoa. See the ports. Okay. See the Oas. <laughs> Have a ball. They're famed Oas. Yeah. I mean, the port's all right. It's really the Oas you go to you go for the port, and you stay for the Oa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're going, we're going to, the yeah. the hill. We're going to Portoa. 
So it looks like the most obvious way is down the slushy, slidey, icy slope. Alternately, you could just jump off the mountain, see how that takes you. Doing it. Jumping off the mountain. Should I roll yeah. a jump check? I just, I just do my flight spell at the last second. Boom. <laughs> uh, Kensu leaps off the mountain and does his flight spell at the last second. His uh, inertial dampers kick in, and he is uh, not that horribly... That was a Rick, Ricky Martin. So uh, you you blow two magic points, Kensu, on that, if I'm not mistaken, for your flight. And you were at the bottom of the mountain. Anybody else going down? Uh, does jump count for landing if I roll a jump check? Yes. Okay. I mean, you can just slide down the slope, but if you're actually jumping off the mountain, 60 feet up, 70, however high. Well, okay. It does cover the landing, though. It, it helps on the landing. You got to take off, like, you know, 2d6 damage, so... Uh, you 4d6. 4d6? Uh... Cause okay, cause the thing is, is that I do have the rabbit boots, so I have a significant jump roll. Yeah, and it'll be really fun for you to leap off the side of the mountain or leap down the slope, which is considerably safer and less rocky and full of sharp things. Uh, I like to live on the edge. Thing, jar thing. <laughs> so uh, I rolled a twenty-six total. Uh, twenty-six. You uh, leap successfully, and when you land. You don't actually feel any breaking bones or anything like that. The boots seem to cushion your fall. Yes. And you make this lovely <laughs> noise as you leap. Beautiful. You're at the bottom, down there with Kensu, who's sort of hover floating a little bit above the grass. I wave back up at uh, Tornell and what's her name? Athena. Yeah. yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to walk down the mountain nice and carefully, okay? Okay, you walk down the rocky part. Uh, roll a climb check, please, because some of it is a little steep, being a mountain and all. Nat 20. <laughs> you are hot, goat. <laughs> <laughs> you forge your own path, which travelers can now use to climb down the mountain if they so desire. <laughs> and it's up to Tornell. Now, are we close to the room where we just had that big battle? Yes. I would, like to, back through the I would like to. I would like to sled down then on one of the uh, the fallen guard's bodies. <laughs> now I think I think law of averages here. Since we all got down the mountain safely, I think something horrible has to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go back and drag one of the guard bodies. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, I I was not. Well, I'm thinking truth. of using corpses as sleds. <laughs> I I uh, completely gave you wrong information. So during that battle, I said everybody was wielding crossbows. Not actually crossbows. Went l back and looked at the in-game sprites. Bow and arrow. Oh. They were all firing at you with bow and arrows. So if anybody picked up a crossbow, you have a bow and lots of arrows instead. Yay. But very professional military-grade ones. So you grab a dead body and drag him or lift him or whatever you want to do with him back. And so you have your dead body. Now what? I will uh, sled him down whatever the safest looking part of the mountain is. <laughs> the slushy slope? The tunnel behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, slushy, the slushy slope. Balance check, please. <laughs> Roll a ride dead body check. It's a 15. Uh, 15 would be okay for a normal sled. <laughs> Uh, but roll a reflex save as you start to tumble off as your guard spins out of control in the other direction. You, you really should have tried to hollow out that body first. It really <laughs> Tw uh, Oh, a reflex save. Hold on. 21. 21 is sufficient to not fall on your butt, but you still trip up a little bit and spin around. <laughs> and uh, You do manage to land on your feet at the bottom, but it does hurt a little bit, and you get banged around a bit, and you take six damage. Can we also say the dead guard's wallet falls out, and there's like a picture of his family in there, and like <laughs> and ironically, and ironically like his say. ID says that his name was Rosebud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, you uh, you find a uh, his wallet in there, and it's it's got a, a magical photograph of uh, his children riding on his back as he's sledding down a hill. <laughs> And it's cursed, so now it's with you forever. <laughs> Have fun with that. And we're horrible people. <laughs> 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 well, I think he would have wanted it that way. 
He died doing what he loved. Or, well, <laughs> he's still doing what he loved. He died the way he lived, as a sled. Oh, well, no, he died the way he lived as a soldier. He's dead the way he... At the bottom of the slope! Yes. <laughs> the river. Uh, I did mention a river. Waterfall, river cutting through the center of the valley. The river opens up into a larger body of water. It's hard to tell whether it qualifies as a lake, a sea, or part of an ocean, for it looks like the area was once very hilly and mountainous, and then was flooded as the water level rose, leaving only a few ridges and plateaus peaking above the surface. In the middle of this body of water is what appears to be a series of small, interconnected islands upon which someone decided to build a town. Oh. The whitewashed buildings with sloping redware tiled roofs are simple but sturdy, built to withstand the elements. A wide bridge of wooden stone reaches across from where you are standing to the edge of town. Welcome to Portoa. Hey, where's the inn? Well, I guess we need a way across the water. Let's hollow out that gulf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. So you march across the bridge. <laughs> uh, you are now standing at the entrance to town, and looking around town, you've got a couple of different shops. On the first little island, uh, you have a couple of fences that seem like they were put in as an afterthought near the bridge to prevent people from accidentally tumbling to their wet, dreary dooms in the water below. Uh, you've also got a little well, which kind of seems redundant because there appears to be fresh water everywhere all around you. And you've got a tool shop, and you can tell it's a tool shop because there's that little baggy pouch of tools uh, that's on the picture above the door. Next to it, or connected to it, appears to be an inn. And farther to the west, on the next little island, there looks to be a long armor shop, as evidenced by the big painting of a shield above the door. And all of these have lovely little chimneys that are putting out little rings of smoke. It's a little bit cooler. I believe uh, by this point it should be about midday, if I'm keeping track of my time properly. And there is a small bridge uh, that leads to the tiniest island of all that is just barely bigger than the building that's on top of it. And there appears to be a small dock out the back of this building, which I suppose is what qualifies this as the port town, is this one guy's dock in his backyard with this little green boat on it. And... To the north of the pawn shop, there is another island with a bridge connecting over to it, which has a little bit more of a fence around the side, uh, because this building uh, cares about its customers. And it is a pawn shop, as evidenced by the little Libra scales that are painted on the sign above the door. Next to it, there is an unmarked building. Uh, it looks like it's a little bit older, a little bit cracked, and doesn't seem to be any marking from this distance, but uh, there may be writing on the door or a small sign or something like that. And there's a pleasant little flower bed out front, which just shouts, Explore me! I'm completely not boring. And the centerpiece of Portoa, out of the uh, island in the middle, where you have the armor shop, extends a bridge that widens off into this sort of, uh, not balcony, but like a, um, I guess a patio of sorts. Um, that's oh, also... I. What's that? A lanai. Lanai. Yeah, isn't that like one of the alien races or World of Warcraft races or something? Lanai. I have it's no a thing. Idea. Yeah, it's a thing. And um, nice little platform. You can see the parts of this where I had a chance to sit down and write my explanations for you, and <laughs> some of it where I'm just winging it. <laughs> and uh, so, anyways, this palace seems to have been constructed perhaps before the water level was raised, assuming that that's actually what happened around here. Uh, because the building itself, the castle palace, isn't on an island. It's raising up from the water with large pillars on either side of this lanai thing. And there are big, sturdy, bulky, goldeny red doors, double doors, uh, marking the entrance. No guards outside, nothing like that. Um, and the, the palace seems to be only one story, but... Um, very nice decoration on the roof, lots of slopes, and you have Portoa. And there are a couple of people wandering around town, but they seem to pay you no attention. Well, actually, they, they do pay you some attention. They look at you, they greet you. Seems to be a friendly sort. Well, we, we pay them no attention as we go directly into the inn. All right, Zebu heads to the inn. Everybody else going with him? Hey. Sure. Yeah, well, lovely. <laughs> Wait, can I go to the pawn shop and see how much they'll give me for that dead guard? <laughs> Uh, it's only slightly used. 
<laughs> Actually, if you're dragging the dead guard into town, people kind of oh. look at you and well, back off. Isn't uh? Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding yeah. me. Yes, Kensu is still dressed as a guard. So actually, thinking about it, uh, as as you march into town, uh, they see Zebu and Asina and Tornell first, and they they seem to register that you're wise men or at least travelers, and they see that you're all gory and blood stained from all of the I'm mess. I'm guard too. Oh, that's uh, right. You're dressed, you're dressed as a guard, but a couple of them spy the ears, the pointy ah. ears. Anyway. Duh. Uh, but they they do see you marching into town. And everybody's a little skeptical, so maybe they actually aren't friendly, and they do sort of stand back and kind of, like, go back into their homes, like, we're not exactly sure what's going on here. <laughs> so, uh, the the streets are now clear. <laughs> Nobody is around. So feel free and you to go into the end. Ken, Kensu, are you breaking off and bringing the car to the pawn shop, or are you going I into I guess the... not. Oh, we got nothing to lose now. <laughs> yeah, no one's around to see it. All right. So you head into the inn. I mean, when you it's a in town. There might be shady folks here looking to buy a corpse. Hey, this is a very respectable port town. In that it's not really a port town because it's just one guy with a dock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it respectable? How? Because people have the common sense to get off the street and be polite and let you drag your guards through the street. It was only actually a coincidence that it's called Porto and now it has a port. So you're in the inn. And it's a lovely, very clean, neatly decorated, uh, lots of uh, furniture made of wood out on the uh, the floor there. And there's a big, long counter and a staircase that goes up to a second floor behind the counter. And you hear a gruff voice call down the stairs, I'm on my way! You start hearing some clomping at the top of the steps and a rather plump man sporting a flat-top haircut that cascades into a mullet plods down the stairs to greet you. Whoa, 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 flat top, like, we're talking like kind of kid and play flat top, flat, bleh, flat top with a, a small party in the back? Yes. So it's party on top and party in the back. Oh, yes. Now, is this becoming a crossover with Captain Planet? It's not <laughs> entirely unlike that. And uh, I, we've had a special request, should we combine the swords to make Crystallis again? We will need to sing the Captain Planet theme song. <laughs> Oh, oh god, I hate that so much. Hey, he us to save our planet. <laughs> He's a it hero. was so horny. I mean, I, I, yeah, sure, saving planet is great, but heart? Heart? No, that's, hey, that's hey, wait terrible. until you pick up the heart sword, you guys. It's going to be... <laughs> sword of heart. <laughs> Anyways, his name is Raul, and he introduces himself, and he says... Hello, my name is Raul. Welcome to my inn. Would you care to stay for the night? Uh, we would. How much? Yeah, would rather. Or heck, you could stay here for the end of time if you had enough money. <laughs> stay a while. Stay forever. It's only a hundred gold dollars a night. Oof. Ouch. Yikes. I'll go hollow out that garden and sleep in him. <laughs> good enough for Han Solo. It's good enough for Ken <laughs> Uh, oh man, you know, we, we just climbed down this mountain here, uh, we're kind of in a bit of a hurry, we we're hoping not to pay quite that much, uh, is there any way... Oh, it's, you can share a room if you want, it's, it's just a hundred gold for the room, and they are rather spacious and cozy. Oh, oh, for the room, oh, okay, that's a little different. Uh, what do you guys think? We could probably put two of us in that guard. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll go in if other people want to throw into the room. Fine. We should try to talk them down a little. Never pay retail. Yeah. <laughs> appraise, Jeff. Well, appraise only really works with goods. I guess you could appraise the, the price of an inn. Well, uh, I mean, where is it? Uh, can I use some diplomacy on him? You can use some diplomacy on him. Okay. Uh... 25. 25 is pretty good. What do you say to him? Uh, look, again, I mean, you can see we're here, we're covered in blood. We just want to, you know, get into our hotel room. What do you say? Maybe 50 a night. You're right. You're absolutely right. Completely free, all of you. You look like you just need to rest. I, I can't even imagine what you've been through if you've been fighting through the wilderness. Oh, out there. Please. Old. 
<laughs> How bad do you think he rolled? We just killed General Com- Kelbeck's son. <laughs> Kel Beck. I beg your pardon. You? Who? <laughs> Uh, well, that's impressive enough for me. You can stay at my inn anytime. I thought I thought General Kovask was some big was a big bad, and he's just like, who? <laughs> he is a big bad, but you can't expect every townsfolk to pay attention to the news. Yeah, I mean, have you seen the guy's mullet? <laughs> there are there are five towns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hell, I mean, and there's like eight people in each town. <laughs> you figure they're, they're, they're hungry for any bit of news, not to mention the Empire had a, had a, had a friggin' floating fortress. That they're working to get into, that you're trying to race them to? Actually, I guess we should have looked for that while we were up on that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it it, it was blocked by Kensu's ego. <laughs> I mean, the mountain. It was blocked by the mountain. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> So, okay, uh, we get into the inn for free. Woohoo! So you, he shows you upstairs to your room, and it's a, it's a nice spacious one. There is actually room enough for the four of you to fit comfortably, and nice plush beds, uh, high ceilings, high enough, anyhow. Uh, windows that open and close. I mean, this is top of the line. <laughs> wow. Now we're sleeping in a ditch for Ken <laughs> He, he no says, uh, but one, one condition, though, uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, your, your dead compatriot there can't come with you. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, we, we do have a discount cemetery out back if you're interested. Discount cemetery? I like the sound of that. I, I would be honored to, to take him and bury him for you. <laughs> hey, I like a room service. So he, he picks up the dead guard walks outside, and a couple seconds later you hear a sploosh from out back. (laughs) He comes back in and he says, if there's anything I can get you, you just let me know. He belongs to the sea now. I like this innkeeper. Real nice guy. (laughs) He's a nice guy. (laughs) What you're saying is, should we have any bodies to dispose of in the future? This is our guy. Yeah. Now, now, since we're back uh, at the hotel room, do we want to maybe split up the gold that we've collected on our grand journey? Possibly. I and mean, who is it who is holding on to it? Was it you, Tornel? Or was it Asina? No. Was it Asina? I don't think it was me. I thought it was Zebu or Asina. I mean, or, or Tornel. Well, I'm... One of the two these guys. I'm holding on... I mean, I have my gold, and then I have the brick of gold that I can sell. And then I also marked down... Plus 700 gold total, which I think was from the last battle, but before that we had gotten some stuff and it didn't go to me. Okay, so collectively, yes. how much do you guys, well, or individually, how much do you guys have, and then do you want to just pull it all together? Pulling, pulling, pulling. Fine. Yeah, the pulling, because I have new people to I have 100 gold on me. You say, I mean, I'll just go out of town for like an hour and kill stuff until I have enough gold to buy everything in the town, because that's what I do in the game anyway. Uh, you can do that. Can we just, I mean, technically we don't have to spend any money if we just keep running different checks until they critically fail, and they have to give us... Uh, no, this this shopkeeper was a unique case. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't the other shopkeeper a unique case, too? Maybe. So anyway, okay, I had 100 gold. How much do you guys have? Uh, I thought it was all being pooled, so I don't think I've even kept track of mine. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> guys. This is not how we run an RPG. Yes. Well, I mean, like, because we stayed at the inn for, what, was it 40 gold? We aren't wizards of financial management. We're wise men of... What are we wise men of? <laughs> Wiseness. Dysfunctionality. It's like... I mean, this is a good question here. Like, what, what do we, what purpose do we serve in this world? Like, we're we're wise men of elements. It's like <laughs> I really know how. What, what I'm done thunder. I'm you real good at fire. <laughs> with, yeah, it's just like oh, I know how to burn things. Man, with your right, Mandy, Mandy knows water. I guess uh, irrigation. I mean, you're you're good at that. 
we could say irrigation, uh, canal building, maybe. Watchmen of, uh, is there one of Earth? No, that's, uh, we got Thunder instead of Earth. Hmm. Thunder, so I'm, I mean, I'd say I do electricity stuff, but Thunder's just sound, so I'm, well, I'm a wise man of making a lot of loud noises, which yeah. is, is, yes, is you are. quite the purpose <laughs> of uh, wind. So, you, okay, all of you have very impressive knowledge checks. So, first of all, you're very smart men, and smart translates in this world to wise. You are very knowledgeable. And even though you may not always be completely responsible with your powers, the fact that you can wield magic at all makes you very special and gives us pointy ears. This, yeah, it gives you pointy ears. Well, that, that, you know, that happened naturally. But people perceive you to be very wise to know the secrets of magic, to be able to use it in the first place. And on top of that, you've sort of become leaders for certain people, like Zebu. The people of the village of Leaf would occasionally come to you for guidance in your happy little cave outside of town. Yes. I mean, to be fair, I got my powers from something I found in the cereal box. So, not all that impressive. Yeah, because they don't have that. I mean, they're simple people. So can we, we use all of this intelligence that we have to figure out how much gold we have? I mean, because, okay, I know that I started with 140 and I spent 40 on the inn last time. You guys also bought some items on top of the 40 that you spent on the inn. Okay, all right, hold on. Here, here's what we do. There's a, it was like yeah. 50 for a fruit of power or something. All right. I don't think I actually bought anything, so it's probably only the cost of the inn minus whatever I started with. Okay. I, I am going to go outside of town, and I'm going to kill stuff until I have 3500 gold. Or dollars. <laughs> and I'm going to buy a platinum shield and a platinum armor, and I will have all the armor class. Okay. Um, so I will leave Kenzie to do that. What about the rest of you as you're figuring out gold? How does that work? <laughs> uh, I get fed up with these losers. I take my gold and put it back in my satchel. Uh, and then I go to sleep on the bed. Okay. Yeah, Kensu, are you actually sleeping first? <laughs> <laughs> you might want You're to. You're going to You're up all night. We're tired. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep too. Okay. Also, so I should... And Zebu are asleep for now. Yeah. Before, just in case something happens through the night, I want to go to the pawn shop. Okay. So you sneak out while everybody else is asleep and Kensu is doing whatever the heck. I couldn't quite hear him. And I'm killing monsters until I have 3,500 gold. Okay, you're you're out, you know, killing them dead. <laughs> and right. Torn Tornell is heading over to the pawn shop. And as you enter the pawn shop, it's a very empty pawn shop. There doesn't seem to be anything that has been pawned. <laughs> and you see standing behind a an empty counter, a soft-featured woman with a dense mane of chestnut hair fanning out far enough to hide a small child in. <laughs> she looks at you and she says, Oh, come in, child. This is so wonderful to have you here. How are you? You're a traveler. I don't think I've seen you before. And that armor doesn't look like it really fits on you, so I'm betting that you're one of those resistancy people that stood up to those royal guards. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just here to sell a pickaxe. <laughs> I love pickaxes. I specialize in buying pickaxes. So please, sell away. Okay, how much would you give me for a pickaxe? She looks at it, and... It sounds like the beginning of bad slash pick. <laughs> <laughs> pickaxes are more impaled than slash, I think. Hi -oh! Okay, that was pretty good. Okay. <laughs> get that so, one you. She okay. looks at it, and she says, Um, I suppose I can give you 30 gold dollars for it. Okay, I've got six. Here you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all yours. <laughs> and that's that's all I needed. So 180 gold goes to you. Wow. Wait. Anything else from anybody? The, the two of you are asleep. Tornell, what about you? Where are you going? Uh, hmm. Before I leave, I'll try to pick her pocket. <laughs> okay. In front of her child. Roll a sleight of hand check. Okay. I knew sleight of hand was a good investment. Let's see. 27. You successfully pick her pocket. And as you 
reach into the pocket, you find... A big X. <laughs> my, no, wait, I didn't sell anything. I was going to save my money back. <laughs> going to use find, that one later. You find a small magical photograph of there standing there looking on at her children riding her husband as a sled down the hill. Terrible. Stupid sleight of hand. I go back to the inn then. <laughs> Yeah, you go back to the end. The best part of Chrysalis was the part where you rode that guy like a sled down the mountain. I mean, that's just unparalleled in the annals of gaming. It is right up there. You head back to the inn. You go to sleep. Kensu is out in the field. And let's say... I'm uh, going to do a bit of quick math. Because I need to look at about how many rounds it would take for you to fight a monster, being cautious enough to not take too much damage to need to come back to town. Yeah, being that you, like, have just come out of a battle, however much HP you have after that. Yeah, okay, so let me, let me look at this. So you are wandering around fighting a bunch of Sasquatch-esque green furred monsters with white bellies and hands and feet, little white horns sticking out. Kind of angry faces. They're uh, throwing axes at you. I think it's axes. And okay. you have some Medusa-esque plants, uh, sort of like aerial plants. Um, I always thought they were aerial plants, but they're sort of like Medusa snake heads that are spinning through the air that fly out of nowhere oh. every once in a while. Is that what they're sort supposed to be? Uh, I think that's what they're supposed to be. I always just thought they were swirly plants. Yeah, that's what I thought. And they they sort of look like the, uh, I'm forgetting the name of them right now, but in Legend of Zelda, the little things that take off and fly around, and then you can't hit them when they land. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, pea hats. Uh, That's with you. So, anyways, these are snake hats. <laughs> or what have you. So, you're out fighting those, and it looks like, and you are also gaining ex experience for this, so I'm going to need to have you roll a couple of things. Um, but it, what was the what was the gold quantity you wanted? 3,500. 3,500. Okay. Uh, these, an hour in the game. They give you 16 gold each. <laughs> Just okay. pile them up. Well, there's some calculations here. Okay, so you will need to kill 219 of these monsters. Okay. And... I just go back, I just go back and forth between town and the... Uh, the other place let them respawn. Yep. And let's assume that based on some of your other battles, if you're doing this solo against one of these, and again, you're taking your time, you're charging up your sword, dodging the axes, that kind of thing, um, and you're also moving back and forth and waiting for them to respawn, let's say five turns per single monster. Okay. Five rounds, I mean. Um, 30 seconds so. per monster. I guess, you know, 30, so 30 seconds is time to see. So that's 1,094 rounds that you're spending fighting monsters. And if each round is 6 seconds, uh, times 6, so that's 6,562 seconds that you're out there. Um, divided by 60, so that's 109 minutes that you're out there. <laughs> Ridiculously nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's like in an hour in the game, I can get all this gold. Yeah, like an hour and a half. I guess an hour. How the hell are I doing this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> it's only the afternoon. All right. Doing this so, too. so let's let's even round up. Give give you a little bit of time to run off and nurse your wounds. So let's say two hours it will take you to gain the required gold. Uh. And you're also gaining experience points while this is going on. <laughs> yeah, instead of going to the inn, I, I would like to go help Kensu. <laughs> nope, too late. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's see. How much EXP would he get from that? Uh, 5,469. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I thought for sure there would be a downside to this. Let me look at your level up rules. Yeah, because uh, he, he just leveled up, like... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, and, and there's actually, if you kill any of those Medusa head things, uh, that's more. So, let's say 
uh, I don't know, let's let's just round that up. To... I gained two levels. I gained two levels, and I have 3,500 bucks. I'm buying platinum armor and a platinum shield. My AC is, what, 25 or something now? I don't know. And I gained two levels. Wait, wait, wait. So let's let's just round up, say that you fought a couple of those flying head things in there. So let's say an even 5,700 experience points um, and 3,500 gold that you would get for going around and fighting monsters for two hours on your own. However, <laughs> uh, however, I want you to roll. Let's see. Um, we'll do one check for every 20 minutes. So, so roll, yeah, uh, roll six attack rolls and three reflex saves. And let me know what you get with each one. Lots, 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 meh, low, low, and reflex saves, good. Define low. Uh, five and below. Lost. Five is important to know. All right. Good, bad, lots, lots. Okay. Lots uh, is basically if you, uh... You could have just said the numbers. Freaking high, <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, um... So, rolling for the monsters as well, and how much, how many hit points do you currently have? Oh, I think it's like 170. Some, well, no way. No, oh, because we, you went through the battle. Went through multiple uh, battles. It's, probably, it's like 100, I think. I was in, I have like a vague number left on my on my character sheet. I know it wasn't the exact thing. But I okay, so what is your exact hit point total? Um, uh, oh, actually, that's what I thought. Uh, 74. 74. Okay. <clears throat> So, with enemies that are actually hitting, because uh, four of the six attack rolls that I rolled hit, and you failed one of the reflex saves, so that's, and so you would take, what is that, 12 damage from failing the reflex save, take, there we go, 12 damage from the one axe to the face, 13 damage from another axe to the face, another 12 damage from an axe to the thigh, 13 damage from an axe to the elbow. He threw an axe to the elbow! <laughs> he clipped you. Another 12 damage. This seems to be the only number that I can roll. 72 um, so far, right? Fine. I, I, I stop halfway through when I go to uh, town and buy some healing with my okay. ridiculous amount of money. And then I go back out and do more. So you, you stop halfway through your hacking, uh, so you have lost half the hit points that you had, and you only get half of the money um, and half of the experience. And then I go back out. Okay. It took me exactly five minutes to go back out. Uh, no, it would have taken you an hour if you stopped halfway through. What? To go back to town. Well, no, I mean, you spent an hour so far. I said you spend an hour, and then you stop halfway through what would have taken right. you two hours. So then you go back to town. So you have 1,750 gold. And what did I say? The ridiculous experience. You gain 2,850 experience, and you're down to half hit points, and you, you go back to town. And now what, Kensu? Everybody else in the meantime is happily asleep. What time is it? Uh, it's mid-afternoon, or later afternoon. He's taking a nap. You, you I have the meal and <laughs> go right back out there. Okay, so you're not actually buying anything yet. You're saving up. Well, I'm going to go off and go to the item shop and buy something to restore my hit points and medicinal or something like that. Okay, well, take it out of your gold. All right. Actually, keep out. track of your gold. <laughs> and as you're starting to leave town... Oh, boo! You're screwing me over here, Nathaniel. <laughs> As you're starting to leave town, Boo. you see an old man hobbling in from outside. He looks like he's equipped for long-distance hiking, traveling, adventuring. He's got a big backpack. Looks to be an old man, but a very healthy, very fit, very muscular old man. And he comes over, and he 
waves an ominous finger at you as you approach and holds his walking stick in his other hand. And he says, you don't know what you've brought upon yourself. You should not destroy the local wildlife like this. There will be repercussions. No speaking, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and he continues to stare at you and wave his waggling finger as you turn around. Sorry, Miguel. What's that? Yes, I'm Miguel. No speaking, babe. <laughs> All right, so you head back out into the field. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of you at the inn are having this almost a vision. Everybody roll a will save. A will save? Uh, 30. Okay. 25. 25? 25. 25. Okay. It's a very strong vision. It, it, actually, it's not even a vision. It's sort of like you've intercepted a telepathic message going from somewhere. But it's, it's very strong, very intense. And you just get this, this fleeting sensation of anticipation. You catch a, a quick glimpse of the floating tower shimmering above the ocean. It's mm. cool. So you continue to sleep. Kensu, you go back out into the field. Yeah. And Can we assume find... that Kensu didn't get the vision? Kensu did not get the vision. And Kensu, you don't see any monsters around here. Uh, <laughs> you should have waited until you had one hit point left. There's a really pleasant river and a waterfall, some trees. I killed a river. <laughs> There's fish inside. Fight them. Nope, yeah. no fish. All the fish are gone. Um, meanwhile, everybody back at the inn gains... 150 experience for having the sense to actually sleep. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, oh no, 150 experience compared to what? 2,500? Is that what I got? That shows where sense gets you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ken, so you coming on back to the village or you're going to poke a river with a stick? I'm back to the village. I'll buy Platinum Shield. Okay. 1,500, I can afford that. So you buy, uh, buh, 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 buh. let me get the stats on that. You buy a platinum shield, and that is plus eight to your shield. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, cut that in half. It's plus four uh, to your shield Wait, my bonus. Armor class. Yeah, I guess 19. Or, yes, yes, 19. Yeah, so it replaces your current shield bonus, if any. So when are you going to transform back into Kensu anyway? Oh, I just assumed that it ran out a while ago. Nope, it, it continued to stay. Does it cost you, you to change back to yourself? I don't remember. Nope. I mean, I'll change back. All right, so you're back. You have your shiny platinum shield. Now what? What time is it? Uh, it's still mid-afternoon. I'm going to sleep. Okay. You go back to the end, and you fall asleep, and everyone's happy, and you all wake up, and you're at full hit points and full magic points. I'm going to see if the monster is alive. And you wake up, and uh, a couple of you stir and smell this horrible, horrible smell of monster blood and fur and Medusa slime as, uh, as Kensu enters. And the uh, room starts to smell a little funny for the rest of the night. Not that it wasn't already not smelling funny, because, I mean, come on. I got a bucket mods. of water over Kensu's head. <laughs> uh, it's refreshing. That's it. Okay, you're all awake, you're all back, ready to go. You have a whole town of things to buy and places to explore, people to talk to. Uh, I just had this crazy vision of a uh, castle floating above the water. Fortress. Whoa, me fortress. too. Whoa. We, crazy. We should go, since we're in the port town of Port Oa, we should go ask some people if they've seen any floating towers over the water. Okay. Yeah. We all leave Kensu back in the hotel. <laughs> yeah, he's not fun. Okay. Oh wait, no wait. So you guys, you guys are like so tired. You know, well, I for three hours. And actually, like, no. In order, in order to get your your full hit points and magic back, you'll need to sleep for eight hours. So it's now but the middle still, of the night. You'll still be up for an hour before Kensu is. So it's the next day. It's the next day. Yes, morning. Uh, well, uh, let's see. I mean, it's it's like super early in the morning. You can continue sleeping if you want. Yeah, I'm I'm basically just gonna hang around uh, until people start to wake up outside the hotel, and then go out and 
talk to some folks. Okay. So, should I roll to a spot check to see if I see any townspeople? Yeah, if you'd like. Fourteen. Um, I'm sorry, what time did you say this was? I zoned out for a second. Oh, uh... Are you going out in the early morning, or are you waiting until it's it's actually, like, people outside time? Oh, no, uh, I'm, I waited until I started seeing people outside my opening and closing windows. Oh, yes, the fancy ones. So, yeah, all right, so it's it's morning, it's mid-morning, um, and now, yes, you do see people walking outside. Hey, so I, I go out to talk to somebody. Okay, you go out, and there's this woman in a pink frilly dress who's walking around just sort of flouncing around town just because it's fun to flounce. And she looks at you and she says, well, hello, how are you? I haven't seen you in town. Yes, uh, I am a traveling wise man known as Zebu. Uh, Zebu? I think I've heard of you. One of my friends mentioned something. Maybe it was the name of her horse. You, you may have heard of my wiseness. I am quite wise, in fact. I see. Where do you hail from? Uh, the town of Leaf. It's a town now? Wow, well, they must have increased their population to seven. <laughs> Yes, uh, well, the economy's been doing quite well for us. <laughs> uh, but I, I have uh, questions for you. I have been wondering. Uh, we are seeking out the floating fortress. Uh, perchance, have you heard of it? She looks at you and sort of cocks her head to the side, and she says, You mean, do you haven't looked up at the sky today? Uh, I roll a spot check. Uh, 23. You look up at the sky and happen to notice in the distance over the mountains there is a pretty visible golden floating tower over the ocean. Oh. Well, then. Fancy that, she says. Yes. Oh, well, uh, that was quite helpful of you. Uh... It's not always there. Sometimes it, it disappears, but it's always been, well, it's been in that general direction for a little while now. Intriguing. Do you know of any boatsmen who might be willing to uh, venture out into these waters and take us to the uh, floating fortress? Why, in fact, we do have a person who owns a boat in this very town. It's the livelihood of our town. <laughs> yeah, uh, King Fortula has that boat. <laughs> has that wonderful boat industry. <laughs> do you know where I might meet this fellow? Why, he's at the west side of town, where the dock is, with the boat. West side, yo. Uh, okay, thanks. I'm going to go talk to the, the boatmeister now. Okay. You, uh, you go talk to the boatmeister, and his door is open. And he's a man dressed in a, uh, a long bearskin robe that sort of looks like, uh, you know, like a toga or something that uh, just made out of bear skin that he draped over himself, has a, uh, a big bushy beard that hides his mouth and nose, uh, which is kind of frightening, actually, because it's just eyes peeking over this bushy beard. Um, What's your Yosemite Sam? Something like that. <laughs> and, very big, and very big ears sticking out. And he looks at you, and he says, Not another person barging into my house. What do you want? Oh, oh uh, I apologize. And I stroke my beard and look at his beard for a moment. Uh, and I say, I was hoping uh, we might be able to use your boat to go visit the Flying Fortress. Well, that'll be the day when my boat can fly. <laughs> you no. are welcome to use my boat. Uh, most people are welcome to use my boat, except uh, there's a slight problem. And I'm fairly grumpy about it. I have once again lost my fog lamp. Oh. And every time I go out wandering through the wilderness, I need my fog lamp because it gets foggy out there at night. And I, I don't know, I wandered into some cave and wandered out. And actually, I didn't lose it in the cave this time. I, I lent it. Uh, to the cave. No, not to the cave. I lent it to this Amazonian woman. Oh. Woman. Yeah, she she sort of bullied me into handing it over. We were just she was out hunting. I guess she was a uh, far distance from her home, and uh, well, I don't have it right now. I thought I was going to get it back, and I didn't. So if you happen to find my fog lamp and bring it back here, then you are more than welcome to use my boat. Oh, 
Uh, do you know of any other way that we could get to the Flying Fortress? Well, I suppose if you could fly, you could probably get there. Hmm, I stroke my beard, and uh, I think, you know, I just might know someone who can fly. It really wouldn't be a gameful podcast unless we went to a lengthy discussion of beards. <laughs> <laughs> he does have quite the beard. Although, you know, I've heard that there might be a secret passageway somewhere in the palace. Might get you out to the ocean as well. Oh. Well, it's really more like a sea. Is this sea angry, perhaps? Indeed it is. Wow. I stroke my beard. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, I will return if we are in need of your services. And you will return if you are in possession of my fog lamp. Yes. Question. Yes. You're not there. I'm not there, but... Yes. What are the odds of us being able to buy another lamp somewhere? Because it is a lamp. Such a thing is not that uncommon, I would think. Uh, you can roll a gather information check, or you can ask somebody, which would be sort of like a gather information check, I guess. I mean, this is a port town... One will assume they have some type of lamp. Now... A purchase. Okay, uh, Kensu, how much MP did you say that you have max? Oh, uh... Now bear in mind that you can only fly up to ten feet above the ground. <sighs> We're gonna have to, like, get the boat, get a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Asina, what are you up to? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question, please? You're on fire. What do you do? Crap, I put myself on. <laughs> My sword of water. <laughs> Why do you need to ask me such things? I feel like that would be the instinctive thing to do. Uh, um, that's not actually what I'm asking. I'm just asking, what are you doing? Zebu is off talking to the man with the boat, and everybody else is doing their own thing. So I'm asking you, Asina, what are you up to? I'm um, probably picking up some supplies. Okay, so there's a tool shop. You want to head in there? Sure. Okay. See if they have any lamps. <laughs> <laughs> so you head into the tool shop, and it's run by a sharp-featured young man wearing a gray helmet with tinted goggles strapped to them and a matching suit of simple padded armor. He looks around, and he just sighs, and then he comes in the door, and he just sort of shakes his head. He says, hi, welcome to my store. My name's Frank. What can I do for you? You can tell me why you're looking so depressed, Frank. You know, I run the only tool shop in this whole town, and nobody appreciates it. Yeah, I get some business every once in a while, but nobody really cares about what I do. You see monsters coming into the town, and what am I? I'm the first guy at the bridge. I am the first shop right here, and when monsters come into the town, they say, Frank, you go out and fight the monsters. You're good at it, and what thanks do I get? Nothing. Wasn't Frank the name of the underappreciated salesman at the last place? Knowledge local check? Uh... 26. Yes. <laughs> Frank! Remember me? I've never seen you in my life. I've... <laughs> are there more than one Frank? Like, are, you, are you asking that aloud to him? <laughs> I'm asking him if he remembers me. Didn't I just, like... Didn't I interact with him before? He's looking oh, at you, but he just does not recognize you. I don't think the last Frank was a sharp-featured young man. He was a young man. But I don't think he was wearing... Your knowledge local check reveals that, yes, he was a sharp-featured young man. Oh, was he? Yes. Frank, I thought we shared a moment. <laughs> is, Hello, is this like, Hello. no, I'm not Nurse Joy, I'm her cousin? I think so. So he says, anyhow, young pointy-eared lady, what can I do for you that I can be underappreciated for? Uh, you could show me what you have in stock, young underappreciated man. I'm so glad you asked. I'm selling these fine medical herbs for 90 gold dollars, wart boots for 120, a uh, lysis plant, which is uh, very helpful, kind of looks like a medical herb, not to be confused with it, cures paralysis, uh, if that should ever befall you, uh, and uh, have a fruit of lime, should you ever get turned to stone. How you would go about using it on yourself if you're turned to stone is beyond me, but I, I, I've heard people tell that it works wonders. Yeah, sure, I'll grab one of those anti-stone things and an additional herb. Okay, so you buy a fruit of lime for 180, and you said a medical herb? Yeah. For 90. Okay. So is a fruit of lime just a lime? 
Now, fruit of lime <laughs> looks very <laughs> looks very similar to the fruit of power. It's that over large berry look, uh, except these are sort of bluish purplish. Uh, however, presumably, oh, actually, well, yeah, they're they're sort of like a purplish color, but you presume they taste of limes. <laughs> well, go on. I mean, it's a purple one. We we had such a thing as limes. Yes. Fruit. Yeah, there's there's got to be limes somewhere. <laughs> Next time on the Game Cola D and D, why is this music so happy? Next time the town gets burned down and the happy music is replaced with sad. Be there.